Hey, I'm celebrity chef Dana Herbert, and welcome to the Chef Dana Cooking Show. Man, do I have a treat for you today. I have my sister from another mister, that's right, none other than celebrity chef Tiffany Derry. Hey! We not worthy, we not worthy. We not gonna start that today. I am so excited to be here. I, listen, when you said you were coming, I was like, yes, <laughs> my sister's coming. I am excited. So what are we making today? Today we're going to make roasted chicken. And you know, I love me some chicken, but most people can't actually cook chicken breast right. So we're going to walk them through that. Roasted chicken, some sweet potatoes, a little bit of roasted mushrooms, and a molasses sauce. Well, you just made me hungry now. Look, we're going to get into this. When we come back, we are cooking some roasted chicken with my sister, Tiffany Derry. When you need fast and intense heat, GE's Power Boil Element delivers impressive power. Plus, this single element has built-in flexibility to accommodate different pan sizes to ensure just the right heat coverage. Don't you want to love the rooms you spend the most time in? Whether it be the kitchen, bathroom, or your home office, Bath Kitchen and Tile is here to help with your remodeling needs. We offer a complete, unique array of ever-changing complete room displays. We also feature the best quality products made by top-of-the-line manufacturers you know and love. We are the only remodeling and design company you will ever need. Give us a call at 1-800-673-3179 or stop by one of our showrooms today. Control your cooktop the way you want with an easy swipe of your finger, thanks to GE's Glide Touch controls. This state-of-the-art technology gives you precise temperature control, so you get the exact heat your cooking requires. Now you can enjoy the unexpected convenience of Keurig at your refrigerator. The Keurig K-Cup Brewing System lets you brew your favorite single-serve beverages from the refrigerator dispenser. Just grab the brewer and open the top. Insert your favorite Keurig K-Cup pod and slide the brewer into the dispenser. Heat the water, then once the water has finished heating, select your size and push the brew dispense button for three seconds. It's quick and easy, so you can get back to enjoying your day. I'm celebrity chef Dana Herbert, winner of TLC's Next Great Baker, the Rachel Ray Bake Off, and a host of other competitions. I'm going to show you my tips, my tricks, my secrets of how you can be a pro chef right in your own kitchen. We're going to go from the sweet all the way to the savory, from a simple cupcake to an amazing filet mignon. So take a ride with me as we go to my bakery and into my kitchen, and I'm gonna show you how I put the love in the pan on the Chef Dana experience. Take dry dishes to a whole new level with Twin Turbo Dry Boost. It works by using a 1200 watt heating element to heat water during the final rinse cycle. Then two fans and an additional 400 watt heater work together to create a swirl of hot air that heats up dishware and removes water droplets. The result? Glasses, plasticware, and silverware that can skip the towel dry and go straight from the dishwasher to the dinner table. Check in without checking out. Thanks to an in-oven camera that allows you to check the progress of your food remotely. Connect your oven to the Smart HQ app, then monitor your meal in real time so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more time on what matters. Welcome back everybody to the Chef Dana Cooking Show. I got my sister here, Tiffany Derry, and we're about to throw down in the kitchen today. I mean, this girl's talking about making 
roasted chicken, we're doing mushrooms, we're doing sweet potatoes, and we got a killer sauce, right? Yes, yes. I mean, it's all about that sauce. It ties it right on together. The molasses, the good old southern in me. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're from where? Originally, is it, wait a minute, hold on. Oh, Lord, is it here we Beaumont? Go. Beaumont, Texas, BMT, Big Money, Texas. Okay. <laughs> um, <no. laughs> Beaumont, Texas. It's near Louisiana, but on the Texas side. So my family is from Baton Rouge and Port Allen, Louisiana. Moved to Beaumont. I spent most of my time there. I mean, it is Southern cooking. Majority of the people who moved from Beaumont actually moved from Louisiana. So you get a lot of like that oh. Louisiana Southern type so of So you food. get a kind of cross between that Tex-Mex and... You know, and it's, so there's a joke. No, there's no Tex-Mex There's there. no Tex-Mex there's, Tex there? there's a joke and it says that people who live in Beaumont because we're on the Texas side, want to be from, you know, want to be Louisiana because that's how everyone so cooks. So y'all want to be Louisiana. That's huh? what they say. I can't believe I just said that out loud right. because, you know, there's right. nothing want to be about us. You know? <laughs> anyway, it's anyway, it's Beaumont. No, okay. so I grew up eating my mother's amazing food, my grandmother's, like my grandmother had 11 children. I come from a family of cooks um, and it's something that we do. I remember not having fast food until I was almost in middle school. Like that's wow. what I remember. So that's like unheard of nowadays, right? Seriously. I mean, we should take it back to the table. But um, chicken, you know, it was pretty prevalent in our household. Um, we didn't really cook just chicken breasts. If it was chicken, it would be like a whole roasted chicken or it would be, um, you know, you know, braised chicken. We did a lot of braised meats and things of that sort. Um, but for this, I wanted to give people something that's easy to do a recipe that they can follow and something that can throw together rather quickly. Okay. So the difference here is I am using skin on chicken breast. Now, why skin on? So skin on is going to give us that skin of crispiness, but it's also going to work almost like a blanket, right? It's protecting the chicken. So mm. it's keeping it from drying out. So underneath the skin, you typically will have a little bit of fat. And as it's cooking, that will baste and sort of create more flavor and also keep the chicken breast moist. So oh, that's... So you, you're going to help them get their chicken game together. That's what we're doing here. That's okay. what we're doing here on the Chef Dana show. <laughs> <laughs> so how can I help you with this? Okay. Meal? So the first thing I want to do is get our sweet potatoes going. Okay. Um, up uh, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. These are sweet potatoes, not, people. Not, not yams. Not what? yams. Okay. Yams are orange. That's right. Right. That's right. School them. Okay. That's funny because I always forget. Um, growing up, people called yams um, orange. They called sweet potatoes. You know, they were the same orange. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, these are sweet potatoes. Thank you. Right. They're lighter, whiter in color where the yam typically has that orange color, right? Yep. But you're true. Growing up, we always used to be like, Grandma making those sweet potatoes. They it's, messed us up. Right. They it's, messed us up for life. It's really candy jams is what they were doing. <laughs> All right. And what's crazy is I remember us calling them yams and sweet potatoes, uh -huh. right? Like depending on who it was, they would either say candy yams or candy sweet potatoes. Right. And um, I don't think anybody ever corrected us. No, because they didn't know any better, Lord. <laughs> now we do. We do a little better now. Right. So I want to get those going. We're just going to put it in with some salt. I'll go ahead and take care of your salt in the water. You Gracias. always want to make sure that you add salt to your water no matter what you're cooking, whether you're boiling vegetables, whether you're boiling tubers or um, potatoes, any of those things. So when it cooks down, it actually is very seasoned. See, I didn't pay her to say that. She just said that. <laughs> See, then I would tell y'all, season hey. the water. Hey, professionals know, right? They, we do. We do. Now, what you, what you got over there? I see you with the salt. I see you with the pepper. And then I, I see something else over there. <laughs> what, what? Uh, so this is my Creole seasoning, and we call it Chef Tiffany because I am she, she chef, right? Okay. So we just came out with our line. It has tons of flavor. So if you're ever wanting to add some flavor into a dish without needing to buy every spice in the world, right, um, just a little bit of a sprinkle or a good amount of the Creole seasoning will do. It's not overly spicy. Um, like when people hear Creole, I'm not sure why that's the only thing in their head. Um, but what it is is spices, right? So mm -hmm. lots of chili powder, paprika, Hungarian paprika, um, a little bit of black pepper, cumin, garlic, all of those type of flavors that come out really well. Okay, now did you bring an extra one of those? <laughs> you know I did, bro. Oh, Come on now. Hello. Say my first rodeo. Hello. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I have a chicken. They're, they didn't come the same size. Um, so sometimes when you're looking for 
skin on chicken breast, you want to make sure you may have to get what's called a split chicken breast, right, where the bone is on. Mm -hmm. You can cook it with the bone. It takes longer. I took the bone off so that it cooks quicker. And one of the things we want to make sure we do is heat up our pan. This is the most essential part of anything that you're cooking. Heat up your pan, add your oil or whatever that fat is that you're going to cook with, and then get your ingredient going. If you do that, they will never have food that sticks, right? Like, so important. Yeah, I always just say heat up that oil so you don't have that, that greasy, uh, that greasy mouthfeel. Exactly. Now, I remember in college, we used to party. And one of my friends. Oh, buddy. College he, stories. I, mean, huh? I don't know where we're going. I, well, where are we going with this? He used to make what we call uh, JoJo fries. It was just potato wedges. But them potato wedges were cooking in that oil like 45 minutes. I've never seen it like oh, that before. Okay. Were but they, they were, good? They, they were good, but they were greasy. They were greasy, yeah. Because I think we were starting with, he was marinating. Starting with cold oil. Marinating in the oil. <laughs> marinating. <laughs> That's right. Them pores opened up and just. <laughs> yep. I love it. Yep. Okay, so potatoes we're gonna do when that finishes, we're going to add in a little bit of brown sugar, some light brown sugar. We're gonna add in some butter and just a touch of milk and puree it so that it's nice and creamy. Okay. Chicken, we're gonna sear it off, um, get that skin good and crispy, and then we'll pop it all in the oven and start with the mushrooms. That sounds good. Yep. That sounds good. Well, that's what I'll be working on over here. All right, so I'm getting the rest of these sweet potatoes cut. Do we need the third one, or is two no, of them? No, two is good. Two it's is just good. You and I. Okay. All right. <laughs> That'll cook about four, but it will be good. It'll okay. be good. All right. Dana, I was thinking about the first time that we actually cooked together. Wow. Do you remember that? I think it was in Minnesota. It was. We were on stage cooking. Dana yep. and I used to work together, and we would um, do a lot of diabetes cooking and. For those who, you know, wanted to have flavor and wanted to do, and it was good times back then. It was. It was. Time flies. Hey. We were all over the country. My gosh. Yes, all we were. All over the country. Yes. Some but things don't change, though. So, some things Jeez. don't. Some things don't. So you're throwing in some garlic. I'm going to add some garlic. I'm going to add in a little butter once um, my skin gets a little bit more crispy. Okay. And then I'm also going to add in some thyme in a few. Now... Why are you adding the thyme to the pan? Tell them why. So what's going to happen, um, once this chicken, if you can smell it, it smells incredible. Um, once all of this starts to cook and we get off and put a little more butter, we're going to baste this. Okay. And when we start basting it, the garlic flavor and the thyme flavor will go inside the chicken. Nice. And so whatever we put in the pan will go into the chicken. We do not want to add the butter too early because then it will be black and burn. Okay. I'll add my time around a little bit more later so I'm just kind of letting it rest here for a moment and then once we see uh, my skin is almost there it's getting nice and crispy we'll turn it over it has a lot of red chili spices in there so mm -hmm. it'll be a nice golden sort of brown color as well now I love thyme I actually use thyme in some of my see that? lemon that's Ooh. that color right there that's what we call the money shot right there. No, that's the flavor. So the skin is getting nice and crispy Look, right now. I'm already hungry. I know. And then you didn't flip the chicken. I'm like, are you sure it's not done? No, no. Are you sure? No, no, not done. <laughs> <laughs> but I love thyme. I use it in some of my lemon cookies at the Ooh, shop. Yes. A lemon thyme cookie. Yeah, yeah. I can see where you're going with that. Mm -hmm, yes, that mm -hmm. herbal flavor. Yep. Sounds amazing. Really good. Yep. So when we come back, y'all, Tiffany's going to show you how she's going to base this chicken. We got our sweet potatoes going. We're going to get into those uh, mushrooms. Mm -hmm. We got some mushrooms going on over there. And you are going to love it when we come back. When you need fast and intense heat, GE's Power Boil Element delivers impressive power. Plus, this single element has built-in flexibility to accommodate different pan sizes to ensure just the right heat coverage. Don't you want to love the rooms you spend the most time in? Whether it be the kitchen, bathroom, or your home office, Bath Kitchen and Tile is here to help with your remodeling needs. We offer a complete, unique array of ever-changing complete room displays. We also feature the best quality products made by top-of-the-line manufacturers you know and love. We are the only remodeling and design company you will ever need. 
Give us a call at 1-800-673-3179 or stop by one of our showrooms today. Control your cooktop the way you want with an easy swipe of your finger thanks to GE's Glide Touch controls. This state-of-the-art technology gives you precise temperature control so you get the exact heat your cooking requires. Now you can enjoy the unexpected convenience of Keurig at your refrigerator. The Keurig K-Cup Brewing System lets you brew your favorite single-serve beverages from the refrigerator dispenser. Just grab the brewer and open the top. Insert your favorite Keurig K-Cup pod and slide the brewer into the dispenser. Heat the water, then once the water has finished heating, select your size and push the brew dispense button for three seconds. It's quick and easy, so you can get back to enjoying your day. I'm celebrity chef Dana Herbert, winner of TLC's Next Great Baker, the Rachel Ray Bake Off, and a host of other competitions. I'm going to show you my tips, my tricks, my secrets of how you can be a pro chef right in your own kitchen. We're going to go from the sweet all the way to the savory, from a simple cupcake to an amazing filet mignon. So take a ride with me as we go to my bakery and into my kitchen, and I'm gonna show you how I put the love in the pan on the Chef Dana experience. Take dry dishes to a whole new level with Twin Turbo Dry Boost. It works by using a 1200 watt heating element to heat water during the final rinse cycle. Then two fans and an additional 400 watt heater work together to create a swirl of hot air that heats up dishware and removes water droplets. The result? Glasses, plasticware, and silverware that can skip the towel dry and go straight from the dishwasher to the dinner table. Check in without checking out. Thanks to an in-oven camera that allows you to check the progress of your food remotely. Connect your oven to the Smart HQ app, then monitor your meal in real time so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more time on what matters. Welcome back everybody to the Chef Data Cooking Show. I'm here with my sister Tiffany Derry and we are throwing down today in the kitchen we are pan roasting mm -hmm. some chicken right now. Tiffany uh, basically seasoned it with some salt, some pepper, and her new Creole seasoning. That's right, from Chef Tiffany. That's Chef with a S H. -E yeah, F. baby. All right. And then I got some sweet potatoes going into the pot right now. They are uh, boiling away. So, Tiffany, what are you doing right there? So, right now I have some garlic cloves in here. You can see they're starting to slightly brown. Uh, my chicken is ready to be turned. My thyme is in here. And now as the thyme hits that butter, um, sort of that the juice or the liquid that's in the thyme will start to um, really create a really nice flavor into the sauce. As you can see, the chicken is a beautiful golden brown mm -hmm. with all of those flavors. You hear that little that sizzle? That crackle mm -hmm, pop going mm -hmm. on. That's something happening right there. Huh, that's right. That <laughs> so ain't right now, <laughs> <laughs> So now we're just going to take some of that fat. Uh -huh. And we're just going to keep going over this. And then I'm going to pop this um, again in another pan and get it going in the oven so that we can have this chicken. Usually from this moment, it takes about anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes to okay. allow it to finish cooking. Okay. So this little one, little guy is going to cook a little bit faster. So I'm going to watch an eye on him. So that's pretty much it. That's really how you create a great chicken. The other thing that you want to do is always use a thermometer. The issue with overcooked chicken is always that it's dry, right? Which right. means it's overcooked. Which means that you just simply need it to cook it to about 160. And then from there, it will carry over cooking to 165. So 165 is what we're always trying to hit, right? Yep. So in basting the chicken, it's a, kind of like a two-part thing. You are flavoring the chicken mm -hmm. or the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, giving it some of that moisture, imparting the flavor mm -hmm. from the thyme, from the garlic. See, she's smart. <laughs> she's smart. She is that important is what we're doing. and she's smart. That's what they say. You is important. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I'm not going to play with you. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, so basically that's really what we're doing here. The other thing, I just want to sear it off really nicely. And then I want to get started on our mushrooms. So mushrooms, so we got the trumpet. That's right. Um, these are some odd looking mushrooms, They right? are big. So the trumpet mushroom uh, is from the Mediterranean area. Also very uh, common in parts of uh, Africa. Uh, definitely in Asia as well. So with some mushrooms, you can only eat the top of it. With these mushrooms, Tiff, can we eat the whole thing? We eat the whole thing. That's oh, the beauty okay. of them. You're not wasting nothing. And they're very meaty, um, which is what I love about the mushroom altogether. So let's say that you aren't really into, you know, maybe eating um, chicken or beef or any of that. You're vegetarian. Mm -hmm. You could go and use this as a fantastic substitute. So um, kind of how people got hooked on, say, portobellas. Right, exactly, Same right. Same thing with the trumpet mushrooms. So what I'm doing, I'm cutting it in half, and I'm scoring it, almost like you do when you are either, um, you know, like when you're barbecuing, right, you make those diamonds, right? So right. sort of that. Um, that's really what I'm doing here, and I'll show you why in a few. And the know, larger. You know I was about to ask. I'm like, <laughs> why are we pouring that? So you'll see later. I won't spoil it. She's going to show you. Those she are the little you. details that when we are cooking, um, you'll see why. You'll see why. So okay. what else are we having with the meal? I know we talked about the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. We talked about that beautiful chicken you're pulling out there mm -hmm. with our uh, chef seasoning on there. Yep. We got the um, sweet potatoes going here. What else are we having? Today? So then we're going to do some asparagus. So if you can walk them through how to sort of prep asparagus, I think that will be very helpful. Okay. So because most people don't know, like, how, do, how much do I take off, right? Like, all right. how much of that stem gets taken off? Gotcha. So a lot of times with the asparagus, let's see, where did I put that peeler? Right here. I got it. There we go. Thank you. So with Chicken the asparagus, in. a lot of times um, you're not going to end up eating the very bottom of it. The very bottom of the asparagus, if you guys can see, it's, uh, what's the word for that? Woody. woody yeah. <laughs> Super woody. It, it's woody. Uh, it's very fibrous, very thick. Uh, it's tough. Um, the most I would do with that would maybe use it for flavoring in a stock, exactly. and then I would get rid of it. Um, but it is very fibrous, so a lot of times you're going to cut that off. Um, and even on the bottom, a lot of times, we might even peel. Mm -hmm. Some of that asparagus. Okay. I'm with you, bro. You with me? She with me. All right. So I, while you're doing that, I'm going to get our mushrooms going. Okay. So what I've done is cut the tops in half if they're a little big. All um, right. And then scored them like I showed you on the other. And then what happened is this pan is so seasoned, right? The garlic, the thyme, the spices, like all of that flavor is inside this pan. And now that I'm using it, it's going to flavor the mushroom, so I'm not even going to have to do anything to the mushroom right now. See, that's why I've been telling y'all, put the love in the pan. Once it's in there, mm -mm -mm. all you got to do is just keep building your flavor. That's it. Building the flavor. And then I think this is sort of that perfect mushroom because you can do so much to it. It has so much flavor. Um, I also have, what are these, baby bellas, or you can just kind of throw those in if you have an assortment of mushrooms. Um, it doesn't really matter. Whatever so you have. If, I'm, if, if they're going to use an assortment of mushrooms, would they want to use something kind of meaty so it cooks kind of like around the same time? I like time? the trumpet. I like the trumpet for what it is. And uh -huh. I also like the trumpet because of how it looks when it all finishes. Okay. Um, and then you can honestly have fun. Oyster mushrooms. Um, okay. Whatever mushrooms you have, wild mushrooms work great. Um, and that way you kind of get a little bit of... Um, the meatiness and sort of just different flavors when you're cooking the mushroom. Gotcha. I kind of do the same like when I'm doing apple pie. Mm, like I never sure. use just one apple. Yeah. I think that's just one note. You're like, eh. I agree with I you. I mean, don't get me wrong. A Granny Smith could be good or a Honey Crisp could be good. Could but be. If but I'm, it could be better. It could be better. <laughs> so I just, you know, mix it up. But I totally understand. All right. So. So chicken's in the oven now. Um, and then we're going to cook that again to that 160 until it gets to 165. Okay. Um, mushrooms are cooking. Sweet potatoes should almost be done. That's what I was doing. Let's see what we got going on in there. And then we're going to have a sauce, right? Yes. So I have my demi gloss working. Okay. So basically. Well, what, what's demi gloss? Demi. Demi gloss. Uh, Y'all know Demi, my girl Demi. Y'all see me? Where's she at? She ain't here. She's not here. Uh, so we have basically a stock of <laughs> okay. beef that has been reduced down. Okay. Um, 
I mean, we're talking about starting here and then ending right here, right? So lots of flavor, lots of concentration. You can buy a demi already done. Sometimes you can find them in a frozen section. You can find them um, in uh, sort of refrigerated as well. A lot of different brands. But if you don't have it, you can also just take a little beef stock, reduce it down, and thicken it up as well. Concentrate the flavor. That's it. We're just trying to get that flavor. Gotcha. I remember the first time I had Demi compared to like gravy, and I was like, well, this is almost like crack. What is in that, what is in that pan? And they so were like, oh, flavor. that's Demi. And they're like, well, what's the difference? You know, I was a young chef sure. then, and they were like, you got to reduce it down. Man, it's a lot of work. Right. Okay, so this is the reason that I scored the mushrooms right here. So Ooh, what you get is sort of like that scallop look. I was about to say, it reminds uh -huh. me of a scallop. Uh-huh, so you get that scallop look. That's so important. Um, presentation. Look, can we wrap that in bacon? Was it? I bet you it'd be banging. Chef, you can wrap it in whatever right. you like. All right. You look, can wrap it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, it looks just like a scallop. Yep. And so then on the other, on the top, you sort of get that gray, interesting look as well. Mm -hmm. So really, it's just about we're just making sure that we have some different textures, flavors, um, all of that. So look that we that. eat with our eyes first. So this is the first time. Is that not crazy? Look at that. <laughs> I'm over here like I, I might have some apple with bacon. Why? <laughs> <laughs> folks sorry. always want to add I don't bacon. Know, you know me and bacon. Is, <laughs> we go together. <laughs> like PB and J. Oh my gosh, like PB and J. And then the other mushrooms, I'm just turning them over and I'm just going to hit them with a touch of salt. Okay. And then I'm going to pop these in the oven as well. So you're really just letting those natural flavors from the mushrooms just come out. Correct. Not muddying it up with a whole lot of nope. other stuff. We have so much flavor on that chicken. I'll put my bacon to the side. It's fine. It's fine. I'll, I'll get over it. <laughs> so I'll pop this in with the chicken, too. I'll get over it. Oh, Jesus. All right. And I'm you over could it. you could just take the chicken itself um, and put it with the mushrooms on the same and get it going in the oven, too. But just for sake of time, I wanted to get the chicken cooking and then, you know, get the mushrooms. So if you're at home and you don't want to have too many different dishes to wash, that's what you do. That's what you do. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so we got our chicken in the oven. That's going. We have our trumpet and baby bella mushrooms mm -hmm. in the oven. Sweet potatoes boiling. So when we come back, we're going to show them how to whip up Tiffany's famous sweet potatoes. I'm going to just throw those huh, in You going to throw them in yeah, there? Yeah, you know, too much work. We're not working too hard around Look, here. She's like, I'm throwing it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so when we come back, we're going to work out those sweet potatoes and the asparagus on the Chef Dana Cooking Show. When you need fast and intense heat, GE's Power Boil Element delivers impressive power. Plus, this single element has built-in flexibility to accommodate different pan sizes to ensure just the right heat coverage. Don't you want to love the rooms you spend the most time in? Whether it be the kitchen, bathroom, or your home office, Bath Kitchen and Tile is here to help with your remodeling needs. We offer a complete, unique array of ever-changing complete room displays. We also feature the best quality products made by top-of-the-line manufacturers you know and love. We are the only remodeling and design company you will ever need. Give us a call at 1-800-673-3179 or stop by one of our showrooms today. Control your cooktop the way you want with an easy swipe of your finger, thanks to GE's Glide Touch controls. This state-of-the-art technology gives you precise temperature control, so you get the exact heat your cooking requires. Now you can enjoy the unexpected convenience of Keurig at your refrigerator. The Keurig K-Cup Brewing System lets you brew your favorite single-serve beverages from the refrigerator dispenser. Just grab the brewer and open the top. Insert your favorite Keurig K-Cup pod and slide the brewer into the dispenser. Heat the water, then once the water has finished heating, select your size and push the brew dispense button for three seconds. 
It's quick and easy, so you can get back to enjoying your day. I'm celebrity chef Dana Herbert, winner of TLC's Next Great Baker, The Rachel Ray Bake Off, and a host of other competitions. I'm going to show you my tips, my tricks, my secrets of how you can be a pro chef right in your own kitchen. We're going to go from the sweet all the way to the savory, from a simple cupcake to an amazing filet mignon. So take a ride with me as we go to my bakery and into my kitchen, and I'm going to show you how I put the love in the pan on the Chef Dana experience. Take dry dishes to a whole new level with Twin Turbo Dry Boost. It works by using a 1200 watt heating element to heat water during the final rinse cycle. Then two fans and an additional 400 watt heater work together to create a swirl of hot air that heats up dishware and removes water droplets. The result? Glasses, plasticware, and silverware that can skip the towel dry and go straight from the dishwasher to the dinner table. Check in without checking out. Thanks to an in-oven camera that allows you to check the progress of your food remotely. Connect your oven to the Smart HQ app. Then monitor your meal in real time so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more time on what matters. Welcome back to this flavor-packed episode of the Chef Dana Cooking Show with my sister Tiffany Derry. Now, if you missed any of it before, we've got a pan-seared chicken in the oven mm -hmm. that was basted. With love. With and love. garlic. And thyme. Uh -huh. And butter. And then more love. <laughs> <laughs> and we seasoned it with Tiffany's new Chef Tiffany uh, Creole seasoning, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. So y'all should see that in the store soon. Make sure to grab that. For sure. Um, we had some trumpet mushrooms, right? Yes. They're in the oven, mm -hmm. and they look amazing. Fantastic. I mean, she has some of them in there looking like scallops. I want to put bacon around the thing right now. I'm yeah, and I denied him that. I did. No bacon today. I'm telling mom. <laughs> um, and then we have some asparagus, which you saw her. She just pulled out. We blanched that, and we got some sweet potatoes going in the water. So I'm going to need to pull these sweet potatoes out. Real soon. Yeah, let's right. give it a let's check. See. Let's check one or two here. See how they're doing. Now, I know I'm pulling the, the, the potato out, and you guys are like, that ain't no sweet potato. Because most people think mm -hmm. that the yam is the sweet potato, but really, the sweet potato is lighter in color. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to use the thermometer here, um, just to be sure. Guys, get yourself a thermometer if you don't, because if you have not been using it, you've probably been overcooking your chicken. Just saying. It'll save your life. You mean so, I don't have to cook chicken to like 200 degrees? Oh, you know they do. You know they do. I know. I know. <laughs> so my small chicken is ready. Um, my other chicken is almost there. Your other chicken is almost there? Yeah. You need a second pan? Nope. Okay. My mushrooms are ready to come on out. Mushrooms are ready. Everything okay. is coming together. How my potatoes? Are they? I think they're good. Yeah? I'm just checking some of the bigger ones. I want to be sure. Yeah, because we don't want lumpy. I mean, I guess we could have that if that's what we wanted, right? Right. We could have... We could have a uh, smashed uh, <laughs> sweet potato. Okay. I think they're going to do the trick. Okay. Right. I love these potatoes. Let me start pulling them out. How they feel? They feel okay? They feel great. All right. You know what I like about the white potatoes, too? Because they're extremely sweeter to me most of the time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little more starchy, too, right? So, like, you have some good amount of uh, it can hold up well. One of my um, friend's mom out of Alabama... Um, makes all of her sweet potato pies with white sweet potatoes. Oh, I bet you she trips them out, Oh, right? my gosh. And I remember the first time I had it, I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I just love little traditions of things like that. It was really white. It was delicious. And the flavors were, like, hitting. So it was great. Now, I know all of my, uh, my viewers, they want to know, how did little Tiffany from Beaumont, she would say big money, <laughs> big money Texas, wind up uh, getting into cooking and being a, uh, a celeb chef. Yeah, um, I was working in my restaurant at the time. It was Go Fish, and uh, I had a phone call. And uh, at the time, I said, you know, once we're cooking in the middle of the shift, we don't answer the phone, right? It was like, tell whoever it is, we'll call them back later. 
Um, the hostess comes and she's like, chef, you got a phone call. And I'm like, okay, well, just tell my call him back. She's like, no, chef, you got a phone call. I'm like, so, okay, um, I got it, people is it waiting. Is an emergency? Yeah, it's, why? Why? And why didn't they call my, my cell phone if it's a real emergency, right? Right. So she's like, no, it's Top Chef. And I'm like, girl, please, Top Chef ain't calling me. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I get the phone, because now I have an attitude, because I really think someone's playing. And I'm like, hello. And they're like, hi, this is Magical Elves. And I'm like, <clears throat> well, hello there, you know? <laughs> and so that was sort of the start of Top Chef. And then um, from there, I've been able to do season seven, DC, um, one fan favorite, came again on All the Stars, yeah, um, which was great. And then started doing other stuff like Bar Rescue and judging on Top Chef Junior and Top Chef. We just did season 17, 18. 18. Of, oh my gosh. Wow. 18 seasons of Top Chef. That wow. is crazy. So now I'm judging and uh, it's pretty cool. So how do you like judging? Different. <laughs> Lovely, but different. Like, I thought that I wouldn't have the same, like, like, feelings right like normally when you're competing you're like oh my gosh oh my gosh don't do that oh, oh, you know like all of that kind of craziness um sitting on the other side of the table didn't change that i still have those feelings right like i want to get in and coach oh, but, like, but it's for somebody else you're like hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. yeah 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 oh, for somebody else. i got you mm -hmm. now i, I can just you. tell myself to relax it's okay <laughs> but i love it no judging is great you get a chance to especially with um the younger audience is great and then also too for amateurs that's been pretty great so that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So I noticed that you got another restaurant coming. I do. So, so. you so you weren't busy enough before, <laughs> but now you want to be really busy. I guess that's what it is, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can get any busier. Uh, yeah, no, I have another. So we have Roots Chicken Shack. Okay. We have one in Austin. We also have in Plano in, uh, in Dallas as well. And then we have another location called Root Southern's Table, which is going to be sort of my ode to my Southern cooking, uh, where you will find dishes sort of like this um, at Root Southern Table. So we're building. Mm. We should be opening soon. So it's Root Southern Table. It'll be it'll be different Correct. than Root's Chicken Correct. Jack. Yeah, yeah. Now, am I, I'm trying to remember, did I hear this correctly? At Root's Chicken Shack. Uh huh. You guys fry everything in duck fat? Home of the duck fry, baby. Yes, yes. So our fries, our fried chicken wings, our chicken sandwiches. Look, I'm like. Even our Caesar salad is duck fat breadcrumbs. Like, mm. it's so good. It's so good. So, what made you shift to duck fat versus regular fat? Because I know people are like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm just mm -hmm. going to fry in some soybean oil or mm -mm, peanut no, oil. No, no, the flavor is completely different. I remember the first time I went to France. And um, I had duck fat fried potatoes, right? French fries. That's what most people know. And I was like, oh my gosh, what made this so much better, right? Mm -hmm. And understanding like the flavor of duck fat and that it wasn't going to be wild and it just added crispiness, added flavor, um, almost sort of like that umami flavor that you get of something like you don't know what it is, but you know there is something There's special something about in it, there, right? right? And so um, we did that, and it wasn't until actually this Thanksgiving mm -hmm. that I was thinking about my grandmother's dish. And she used to do um, this amazing cornbread dressing with whole duck, and the duck would render down and cook inside of the cornbread dressing. And I realized that was my Ooh. first thought and my first love of the duck. So the fat from the duck would go right into that cornbread stuffing. And that would be like our meal. That was the favorite thing on the table. And I realized that was my first like love of duck fat. So it's in me. It was already in I you. Know. You just had to wake it up. <laughs> I That's didn't know what I was messing with before. Yeah. Uh -huh. That is funny. Yep. All okay. right. So we've pulled out the chicken. Chicken's ready. We've we need pulled to finish out the, the potatoes. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to finish these potatoes. We got our asparagus blanched. So what are the next steps? I know when we come back, we're going to get into this sweet potato. We're going to puree it up. What are some of the ingredients we got going on here? All right, I see so butter. Butter, light brown sugar, uh -huh. and then just some milk. Gotcha. That's it. That's we're just going to put that. We have some salt in there. We'll taste later to see if we need to adjust with a sprinkle more of salt. Um, okay. But it should be good. In fact, the sweet potatoes are so sweet. I'm going to tell us we're going to do half that brown sugar first to see where we're at. Because, I mean, they are sweet like candy. Okay. Okay. Yep. So... What was the molasses going there? Okay. Because so. I, I saw some molasses on the <laughs> table. What's that going there? Okay, so we have our demi gloss, which is uh -huh. by itself. Um, I have some Dijon mustard, which is going to give it a little bit of acid. And then we're going to add in the molasses 
to add the sweetness to the demi glace. Okay. Okay. And that's so, going to be on the chicken. I got you. A little I got bit. You. Drizzling. So, should we mix up the sauce? Now? Yeah, I'm All ready. Right, I'm ready. It. Let's do it. Okay. We're going to work this sauce real quick for you guys. And it's so easy. Okay. I mean, that's the, the point of using the demi glaces. You're taking it, it's already almost there, right? So, like, the flavors are already there. This demi glace has cooked for almost 48 hours. So, you are really getting all that flavor. I remember when we used to make demi glace and we would have to fill it up, and he would render it all the way down. <laughs> and then he'd be like, oh, I'm going to double do it. And yeah. he'd fill it up again and render Bring it all it on the way down. down. Yep. But I mean, man, it takes work to make it amazing when it was all done sure okay. i'm just going to give it a try we're going to bring it up back to a boil and then we're going to like like let that simmer for a second okay perfect that's it it's tasting good yep okay i can't wait for you to try this all right all right so when we come back everybody we are going to dig into how to make these sweet potatoes we're going to finish up and plate the chicken mm -hmm. with our trumpet mushrooms and we're going to get to uh do a little taste test it's my favorite part with chef S H E F, <laughs> Tiffany Dairy, TD Concepts, owner of Roots Chicken Shack, and soon to be owner of Roots Southern Table, huh? Yes, yes. Love I it. I feel like I'm reading this long. Oh, buddy, just let it go. We'll, you we'll know? be here till about. But they say, they say, Google me. No. Go. <laughs> we'll be here till midnight, but this girl's got it going on. We'll be right back on the Chef Dana Cooking Show. When you need fast and intense heat, GE's Power Boil Element delivers impressive power. Plus, this single element has built-in flexibility to accommodate different pan sizes to ensure just the right heat coverage. Don't you want to love the rooms you spend the most time in? Whether it be the kitchen, bathroom, or your home office, Bath Kitchen and Tile is here to help with your remodeling needs. We offer a complete, unique array of ever-changing complete room displays. We also feature the best quality products made by top-of-the-line manufacturers you know and love. We are the only remodeling and design company you will ever need. Give us a call at 1-800-673-3179 or stop by one of our showrooms today. Control your cooktop the way you want with an easy swipe of your finger, thanks to GE's Glide Touch controls. This state-of-the-art technology gives you precise temperature control, so you get the exact heat your cooking requires. Now you can enjoy the unexpected convenience of Keurig at your refrigerator. The Keurig K-Cup Brewing System lets you brew your favorite single-serve beverages from the refrigerator dispenser. Just grab the brewer and open the top. Insert your favorite Keurig K-Cup pod and slide the brewer into the dispenser. Heat the water, then once the water has finished heating, select your size and push the brew dispense button for three seconds. It's quick and easy, so you can get back to enjoying your day. I'm celebrity chef Dana Herbert, winner of TLC's Next Great Baker, the Rachel Ray Bake Off, and a host of other competitions. I'm going to show you my tips, my tricks, my secrets of how you can be a pro chef right in your own kitchen. We're going to go from the sweet all the way to the savory, from a simple cupcake to an amazing filet mignon. So take a ride with me as we go to my bakery and into my kitchen, and I'm gonna show you how I put the love in the pan on the Chef Dana experience. Take dry dishes to a whole new level with Twin Turbo Dry Boost. It works by using a 1200 watt heating element to heat water during the final rinse cycle. Then two fans and an additional 400 watt heater work together to create a swirl of hot air that heats up dishware and removes water droplets. The result, glasses, plasticware, and silverware that can skip the towel dry and go straight from the dishwasher to the dinner table. Check in without checking out. 
thanks to an in-oven camera that allows you to check the progress of your food remotely. Connect your oven to the Smart HQ app, then monitor your meal in real time so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more time on what matters. Welcome back to the Chef Dana Cooking Show. I'm here with my girl, my sister, Tiffany Derry, and we have been cooking up a storm. We've got our pan-seared chicken with our special Chef Tiffany Creole seasoning. We have um, some trumpet mushrooms. Everybody's like, trumpet mushroom? Nick? Does it play the trumpet? Does no, it uh-uh, uh-uh, none of it. No, none none of it. okay. No. But we have some beautiful trumpet mushrooms with some baby bellas in there. We talked about the importance of basting. So tell them again, why is it important to baste your chicken? So when you think about all the flavor when we baste, we had garlic in here, we had thyme, we had some butter, and we also had some of the pan dripping, so the seasoning that also gets in the pan. So every time that you're basting, and that means to pick up some fat and put it on top of the protein, you can baste anything, vegetables, root vegetables as well. Um, but when you're doing that, it sort of creates a barrier, helps to uh, make it crispy, but it also adds in all of that flavor mm. back into it. So that's the best way to get that garlic thyme flavor in there. And I'm definitely a flavor dude. Yeah, so all about it. We've got some sauce here. We got some demi. Mm -hmm. And would we add to that? We added Dijon mustard and molasses to this as well. Okay. So a little bit of sweet, and you're also going to get that acid from, from the mustard. Got you. So mm -hmm. the mustard's going to cut it a little bit yep. so you don't feel like you have a mouthful of sugar. Correct. And then we have our sweet potatoes, which we'll also have. So this is more of an autumn winter dish a lot of times just because the idea of sweet potatoes. And then you have the molasses. And it's sort of what I want anytime there's a little bit of a cool breeze walking by outside. <laughs> you know what I mean? We got to warm the bones up, right? We got to warm it up. All right. So I'm going to take my sweet potatoes here. I'm going to pour them into our mixer. Mm -hmm. All right. And then what do we need to add to this thing? So we're going to add in the milk and the butter to make sure that that melts in there and the butter okay. gets all nice and fluffy. All right. So we're going to add in. Look, I'm like, did I lose a potato? It's okay. We're, we got plenty. We got plenty. I'm going to add in my milk. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add in the butter. Mm -hmm. All that butter in there. All that good flavor. Mm-hmm. Y'all saw she cut it up so it wasn't just one chunk of butter. <laughs> In one spot of the bowl. No, not at all. Okay. And then I also have for you a little sugar. I think we should do half of that brown sugar. So we're going to do half of it. Mm-hmm. And then I got you some cream over there, too, just okay. to add in a little. Sometimes the potatoes, if they are a little bit um, starchy, it may take a little bit more milk. And that's something you just look at by eye, right? Okay. So you see what you need. All right. And I'm going to pour in that. Mm -hmm. about half of it. And we really want it to be... Uh, really smooth sort of so, or not where it's looser okay gotcha. and if you don't have a fancy mixer um work a whisk right like smash it with the whisk <laughs> get in there i That's remember how I do those it at home. days where you're like <laughs> lord it'd be so nice yeah. to have a mixer today today so luckily we got one it looks we great got i would put some more i put all that in there we're going all in people yep. the girl wants her cream in there we're yes. going all in there please add it in there okay so we're mixing that up. So we're going to have to give this a taste test. Yeah, we're I agree. All right, let's see. So we don't. We may have to add a touch more salt. OK. And it's still a little chunky, so we can keep going with it a little bit, too. Mm-hmm. We need a little salt. It's definitely sweet enough. Mm-hmm. Now, it's funny. We did not add that mm -hmm. much brown sugar, right? No, we really didn't need it. Like. Perfect. A real sweet potato is what it is. It has a, <laughs> it has a sweetness to it. Sure. So you guys saw there wasn't that much in the dish. I only put maybe a third of it, yep. almost half. Yep. And I can definitely taste the sweetness. Yeah, it. it's got a nice sweetness. And the sauce has a touch of sweetness, too. So that way, it'll really kind of come through. Got All you. right. So we, we didn't want it to be overly sweet, because then it's just sugar on sugar. On sugar. <laughs> That's what we don't want. Right. OK, so my sauce is ready. And we have Ooh, sort of a nice, that. you see that. Did you bring a straw? <laughs> no straws. No straws? No straws. Come on, <laughs> Okay, so let's get ready. Let's go ahead. Let's While play you're that working song. on that, I'm going to go ahead and slice the chicken and get it ready. Okay. All right. Now, I got a burning question. Okay. And 
that is, you know, I know why I get up every day and I do what I do. Mm. But for all those young girls out there, why does Tiffany get up every day and say, I don't want not one, not two Roots Chicken Shacks, but I also want a Root Southern Table. What makes you do it every day? Because it's not easy. It's not, no, easy. No, no, not easy at all. Um, I feel like when you want something, it's in you, right? Like, I've always wanted to have restaurants. Um, understanding how difficult they were and uh, to run, I still wanted it. And I think the very first time that I tried out for a job, they told me no girls were allowed in the kitchen. And I think oh. that that just, it, it did something to me, right? It was like, you're telling me I can't do something? Okay, I'm going to do it now. We say they told uh, the wrong one, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's almost like this thing you just love, the restaurant business. And, you know, I'm very concerned about it right now. And like so many of us. Mm -hmm. um, and... I, it's a love. You got to love it. Like you, in order for you to open a restaurant, get up every day with all of the issues and things that you have to deal with, you just got to love it. Yeah. Period. I love the, um, the people. It, it's, oh. a, it's the smile for me. Like sure. when someone tries something and I can see their eyes light up. Sure. And it's like you said, when you were tasting certain things, i.e. in mm. France, tasting those duck fat fries, Food literally takes you back to these moments in your life that were just special. I agree. It's just special. And you're yeah. like, ooh. Yeah. And then food memories is just so strong, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's one of those things. It's how we connect with our family, with our ancestors. It's how, you know, we live on, right? You know, yep. through our food, through our memories. Um, we have Kool-Aid at the restaurant. You got Kool-Aid? I have Kool-Aid. Real Kool-Aid. And Wait every minute, single time. We got? Red. We got red. Look. <laughs> That's how you know you got real Kool-Aid. <laughs> what flavor you got? Red. This okay. That's exactly what they say. And she so they come the in and they, uh, <laughs> they always say, is that like real Kool-Aid? I'm like, it's Kool-Aid. And they were like, wow, I haven't had Kool-Aid in 20, 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. And the moment they take that sip of that Kool-Aid, that looks great. The moment they take that sip of Kool-Aid, they're like, oh, it just takes them right back to where they grew up, mm -hmm. some family member, maybe grandmother, uh, maybe it was an auntie that put too much sugar. You know, like everybody has their same story. And yep. I think it's pretty yep. cool. Look, I remember my Kool-Aid story. I got a beaten for it. Ooh you know how they, yeah, Kool-Aid, but then they came out with the Kool-Aid with the sugar, right? Mm -mm -mm. I think that must have been like the world's first Sour Patch mix, right? <laughs> so we would eat it and our parents would be like, listen, stop <laughs> eating the Kool-Aid. Oh you know, God. you're supposed to mix it with water and drink it up. Well. Mom mm -hmm. or dad was coming and we were eating Kool-Aid uh -uh. in, in the family room. No. True story. We hid the Kool-Aid under the couch. No. One of us must have accidentally kicked it over, forgot it was there. Big purple stain <laughs> in the rug. Bet that you was won't just do that again. Over time was growing out from under the couch and we're like, where is that coming from? <laughs> the Kool-Aid that my brother stashed under Oh my right. gosh. Right. All right. Okay, so wonderful. I got my sweet potatoes here. All right. So I'm going to plate us up. So we have our nice sweet Watch potatoes. your work, y'all. Watch your work. <laughs> so we're going to go a little bit here. Okay. And you want them to be sort of light and fluffy, right? And then we'll do another here. Sounds good to me. We'll do that. Then we'll go here. Same thing. You've gone through all of the work of cooking for your loved ones, right? Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and go the extra step with plating. Okay. Okay. So then... I'm going to take some of those mushrooms that you've seen, and I'll set one here. I'll set another one. This is one. like food art right now. <laughs> food we'll art. We'll set another one here. We'll do that same thing over here. See, so when they're in the kitchen, and you think they're just cooking, and they're just going like, nah, no, uh -uh. there's a lot learn. of love that's there going is. on. Uh, it's purposeful, on purpose, and they are handcrafting beautiful works of art. Uh, for their customers. That's right. Mm -hmm. I just need a few of the asparagus if you okay. don't mind cutting some down a little bit. Yep, maybe well, half. Mm -hmm. And that way we'll add that on. So we didn't do anything but steam our or, or just cook our asparagus, right? We don't we didn't saute it. We didn't do any of those. Thank you. Oh, we only get in tops today. We fancy round. We fancy round. At my house here. we use the bottoms too. <laughs> uh, so we'll add a little We're bit. We're being fancy. <laughs> I love it. So what's competition like? Competition. In what way? Well, chef. Like, 
Is there an anxiety that, you know, you feel when you're going into competition oh that some people um, rise mm -hmm. when that anxiety hits them mm -hmm. and, and it causes other people to fall? Like, what's it, what's it like for you? I get this thump, right? Like, there's this thump. thump that happens inside. <laughs> you can hear your heart beating. Okay. Um, and then all of a sudden, I calm down. Okay. And then from that moment, it's on. It, okay. It is something that somehow I have come to love. Um, I don't know. It's the crazy in me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I signed it, up for this. I know, right? You willingly did this to yourself. Um, I love competition, um, and it's. I think it's healthy. It is. You know, for me, it was really a. I wanted to know where I was at mm. in comparison to you know some other peers out sure. there in the industry. Um, but I realized each one I got into, whether I won or I lost, I really won. Sure. Because I'm coming out of it better than I was before. Always. You always are. And in competing against someone else, you, visually you're learning. You're like, ooh, that was a good trick. Sure. Or that was slick. I mean, I think part of competing is not only just the competition part of like you going against someone else, but also the what you learn, right? You learn so many things while you're competing. Mm -hmm. yep. I cooked this for you, <laughs> sir. I had to come all the way to Delaware to come cook for yes. you. Yes. This it, look at this, y'all. This oh my is gosh. beautiful. So again, really the bigger thing is just making sure that however you play, just don't put it all together. If you're gonna serve a chicken breast, cut it in half. You see that I was able to serve one chicken breast for two people. Mm -hmm. Um a lot of times we over um you know serve, we put too much chicken in it. Other thing I want you to notice is sort of on the chicken, you can see that it looks really, really soft and tender. You it don't have the juicy. strings, right? Like most people have strings on the chicken breast, and you should not because it is very juicy. Wow, look at that. Okay, you okay, ready to eat, got, Chef? We got to try this. You got to eat. We got to try this. This reminds me of when we were cooking together <laughs> at the James Beard House. Oh, those were good times. Those, weren't they? You were a great time. Weren't they? I did not know that people were going to walk through the kitchen, though. I was like, what the? And you know, chefs, we can get a little territorial. It's like Super. walking into like a lion's den or something. We're like, did somebody just walk into our right. space? Right, 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 right. Rawr. <laughs> So right. the James Beard House is the kitchen is super small um, in in many ways, right? Like it's short too. Like that ceiling is right there. And for us tall folks, it right. was it was mm -hmm. definitely an experience. Yes. All right. First, I gotta try the sauce because. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't even gotten to the chicken yet. Sauce is like off the hook. Okay. Because I'm getting some. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I can get that molasses. But then it's cut with that little bit of mustard. So the chicken has again all of those spices. We left the skin on. That's you can what I definitely want. I want a piece of this skin right here. That juiciness of the chicken. And I'll do like I don't normally do, y'all. I first my first bites is like, Tiffany, why you put so much in your mouth? You own camera, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I do it every time, but this time I cut it. There we go. Mm. Mm-mm. Now, you know, so it's juicy. funny. I'm not always a skin person. Mm. It's got to be crispy for it's me. It's got to be. Like, I don't like that loose, wet, flappy skin. It just don't work. You know what nobody I'm talking like about. It. Like, when no, it's like, nobody, <laughs> nobody like that. <laughs> okay, it's not just me. Because, you know, it's like soggy. But when mm -hmm. you do it crisp, whether it's doing it on chicken or doing it on, like, a salmon or whatever. Sure. You achieve crispiness. You're That's like, right. there it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is delish. Fantastic. I love, like, all the spices. Mm-hmm. That Sweet Creole potato. seasoning is crazy. I know, mm -hmm. right? I'm okay, kidding, talk. Mm hmm. You looking mm -hmm. like me, bro. Yeah. Again, right. this is something mushroom. that everyone can do at home. Um, we mm -hmm. didn't do anything that was crazy. Just simple, fundamental cooking of searing something. Same process with the chicken, same process with the mushrooms. Right. We boiled the potatoes. You can mash them, add in some flavor if you like as well. I mean, we just used was, the stock that was already partially done for us, and we just sort of fixed it up. Right. It's just simple, but it's done well. Right. Right. Not dry. Totally moist. We don't do dry. Mm-mm. 
Yeah. Mm -mm. This not, is not me owning Roots Chicken Shack. I can't be cooking dry chicken, you know? <laughs> I can't come all the way over to the Delaware, over to the Chef Dana cooking show and That's make true. a dry chicken. <laughs> all right? So I'm Chef Dana. This is my sister from another Mr. Tiffany Derry. We've had a great time cooking together. We'll see you next time on the Chef Dana cooking show. <laughs>